It's in 10 minutes to, I mean, we are 10 minutes early, so I think Gillette will be happy. So maybe I can take five minutes more. No. It's just, um, so previously, before lunch, I talked about what might be, or about the technology of containers and what might be possible in the future to um, yeah, put what, what it's done in the software development work with containers into use in HPC environments so that the ease of use of HPC workloads is better, that you can port it from, um, from your local workstation to any cluster better by using the portability and uh, reproducibility of containers. But now I would like to talk about something that everyone can use today, basically. It's not far off. It, um, the other part, the first part, is something that we have to work on, and that's a little bit in the future, hopefully like beginning next year or so, um, that we can achieve something for this. But this talk that I'm talking now about, uh, or this topic, is something that you can use today. And it's about running auxiliary data center services that everyone needs. Um, I mean, we had a lot of commoditization of service, of, of hardware and, and, and software components that are in our data centers nowadays, but there's also a commoditization going on in the service stacks that everyone can use. And what I'm talking about here is that the workload scheduler and your HPC specifics are pretty much tailored to your um, use case, most likely, and to your, your hardware that you use. And this is something that it's not easily done and it's not easily put out, or it's not easy to put out a solution for everyone because you are all a little bit special, right? But what most likely no one is really special about is the Milita part, when I, I have this little acronym. Um, so it's metrics, events, logs, inventory, tracing, alerting, all this software stacks that everyone needs to use uh, in their data center, and that's not really tailored to HPC systems. So, and I will go through all this little uh, acronym pieces and, and give a little overview of what's out there. So for metrics, for instance, there are a lot of backends that you can use. There's OpenTSDB, which looks like, uh, the, which is uh, the, H, uh, the, the big data type of, of backend using HBase and Hadoop. There's CairoDB, Graphite. Uh, there's a new one, uh, Berkeley, tree database, I think it's called. It's using Ceph underneath, then there's an InfluxDB custom one, then there's Prometheus out there, which has a lot of traction nowadays. One of the top projects at GitHub, I think, even, which don't care, cares about um, um, spreading the, the metrics around, but just the use a host local level DB, which is very powerful and very fast. For front ends, I think for metrics, there's just one choice that everyone should use. It's Grafana. Um, it's a very powerful tool. It's open source. There are plenty of plugins you can choose from for every use case you might come up with. And if you don't find what you're looking for, then either you can create your own plugin and publish it to everyone so that everyone can use it, or you, you look a little bit further because there should be something out there. Grafana has plenty of plugins, and I think you can achieve a lot with Grafana. Um, for backends, uh, for events and logs, so, so text-based or text indexing uh, backends, there's Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch, and then there's Elasticsearch, I think. Um, it's an indexing database which is hand-tailored to, or which is done to, to, create, to easily query text, textual data. So that's the backend everyone, I think, will use first. Um, and for aggregating or um, or collecting information, you have things like Logstash, Graylogs 2, which is also based on Elasticsearch with a backend. You have AssistLog, where you can use a plugin for AssistLog to push things to Elasticsearch directly. Uh, and you have new things like Beats from Elastic, and QFrame is a framework I'm working on, um, where you can get information out of your system and push it to Elasticsearch. And front ends, um, there's Kibana, which is kind of like Grafana in the metrics world, it's uh, a front end that is done by Elastic. It's uh, open source. You can use, you can pay something to get a, a plugin that gives you even more powerful tools, but the open source uh, version is, is fair enough. And you can uh, have a good insight into your data in Elasticsearch and it's pretty powerful to use. Inventory is a little uh, yeah, unclear now, I think. It's this thing that's, that's catching up in uh, the open source world. There is uh, one thing um, that's open source from was it Red Hat, uh, Hocula, which is a, a framework to 
digest uh, inventory data, but also metrics information and trying to make it a little uh, holistic to, to look at it. And then you have graph databases like Neo4j or uh, various others that are out there in the uh, open source community um, to store your inventory information. Because it's a graph basically, right, inventory, you can easily model it as a graph and having a graph database is a natural thing to use. And Neo4j is uh, pretty simple, pretty easy to use. It has a good UI and it has a nice query language, so I think Neo4j is a good starting point. And as a front end, um, as I said, Hocular is a framework which also provides a front end. Um, Neo4j has its own front end on UI in there. It's also easy. And there are a ton of JavaScript libraries as JavaScript has a library for everything. There are a ton of JavaScript libraries to create your own front ends pretty easily. Then tracing, I think, is something that needs to be explored um, very, very much in the, the coming time. So normally it's used to trace requests through um, uh, a microservice environment so that you can say, okay, this user uses this service and this user service, and it was paralyzed here and uh, sequential, oh, it was serialized here so that you can get an insight of what's going on within your uh, request. But it could also be a little bit misused to maybe, for instance, uh, showing Slurm data, so that you can see what is your job doing in a, particular, in a particular time frame, so that you can see, okay, this was post-production, uh, post, uh, pre-production or pre-run, and then it was the run time or the, the running job with different stages maybe, so that you can have an insight in uh, what the job is doing by using uh, this tracing uh, frameworks. And there is Zipkin, which is, a, I think, the go-to backend. It's uh, an Apache project. Um, which provides you with a lot of good UIs and backends. And there are a lot of uh, plugins for all different kinds of, of programming languages. Hocular also has a, a tracing component in it. And as a front end, you have Zipkin, which is this uh, UI here. And you have also Jaeger UI, which is also an open source UI for, for tracing. So this should be on your list as well. Tracing, I think it's very nice to, to apply it to the HPC use case and also to the data center use case in general. And last but not least, um, alerting and machine learning in a greater scheme. There are a lot of tools out there to mine your data very easily. Prometheus as well is here a big um, player in this game where you can ad hoc create alerts and um, let Prometheus and Boson, for instance, predict, for instance, the consumption of, um, of disks in the near future so that you can react on failing components before they, they happen. And as well, we have Ocular, uh, Elast Alert, which is Elasticsearch thing, and Capacitor, which is part of the Influx stack, so that you can easily plug it into um, InfluxDB. So you might ask yourself, okay, what's your point here? I think that everyone should stop reinventing the wheel. I mean, I worked in the HPC world for some time, and um, I saw a couple of uh, vendors dealing with this topic. And uh, I don't want to shame or blame someone, but I saw a lot of self-created tools for all of these uh, little pieces. And most of them were not really good integrated to each other. So if you have locks, but you cannot overlay metrics with locks, then there's not really a good uh, usability of it. So I think everyone should come together and collaborate on these stacks and provide I mean, container images um, to use it into, in your data center so that the vendor just has to provide you with uh, Docker or Kubernetes or whatever uh, orchestrator uh, everyone agrees on. And then, yeah, you can put the stacks that you like and the stack that you want to use in your data center and you don't rely on the vendor to supply you with um, his version of monitoring um, services. So I think as well, we, we should provide or I have a lot of stacks, so and I will show a link to this stacks uh, in, a, in another slide. Um, so everyone should use containers, that's the first thing. And we should have example stacks for the different orchestrators. And then we can start sharing dashboards, alerting rules, collectors, and experience with this data center services. And we can ingest what comes downstream from the cloud. So all the cool tools that are out there, you don't have to do it yourself. And the vendor don't have to do this with his team, you can just all use this and make it a better place. So um, I have a blog, I have a podcast. Um, 
Yesterday, I recorded uh, one with Professor Panda, and it was uh, quite nice. Um, I have an email address. Uh, from next week on, I, I will work for Docker, so if you'd like to get in touch, talk about this, and maybe you have a use case, you, you want to explore the, the stacks and you have questions about it, uh, you can ping me. The service orchestrations that I already have, which are for Docker Swarm, you can uh, grab it from GitHub. There are a couple of stacks, some of which might be a little bit older, but the um, monitoring parts should be fairly new. I have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, and I reckon you attend all the HPC Advisory Council workshops because um, I hope to speak about this for the time to come. So uh, just attend and then you, will don't, you don't miss a thing. Yeah, and that would be it. So now we are really in front of the schedule. Don't know what we do about this. So do you have any questions or ideas or I think it will do it. Like yeah, that would be my little how to do data center operations with containers talk. Blown away. No. <laughs>